The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and quite a reversal from where we were just yesterday morning. Markets hitting a low of 45.20 just after the opening bell, 11.30 in the morning, actually. The low, we dipped just below the pre-market lows in the S&P of about 45.26. And since then, you have the market charging higher. You charge higher right into the close yesterday, and we keep going higher. Overnight, from about 45.70 on the close yesterday, we're up 39 points right now at 45.97. You actually make it to a pre-market high about an hour ago of 46.06. So we've given up about nine points on the S&Ps. Tech stocks, NASDAQ 100, you're talking about 300 points or so from 15,492 to 15,792. Back last week, 16,457 was the acceleration following the Federal Reserve announcement last Wednesday. It's remarkable where we've been in this market from last Wednesday. But guess what? We are literally sitting at where we were coming into that Fed announcement, right? Talk about volatility in both directions. You spike up to new all-time highs to put the S&P back for some context to where we are. You back it up to Wednesday. I mean, keep that in mind, right? Just remarkable. We've now risen to right where we were prior to the 2 p.m. Eastern Time press conference with Chairman Powell, the 2.30, excuse me, pre press conference at with Chairman Powell, uh, right back to that price point. At a price point of about 4,600, quite a round number. You back up the Dow, not quite up to that level in the Dow, but you're talking about about 200 points away from that level. Now, keep things in mind. You're about a couple hundred points from where we were. Meanwhile, we had about a 1,500 point drop in that time span in less than a week. Talk about a two-way market, folks. You trade up, you trade down. That move down, though, especially in the Dow, you're talking about 1,500 points in the span of about two trading days from Thursday, Friday, and Monday, we'll call it, maybe three. Crude oil catching a little bit of a bid after hitting quite a low yesterday. 66.12 was the low, just like that. We're back $4 higher, above $70 with crude catching a bid. Gold contract catching a bid as well. Overnight, you trade up to about 1800 We've backed off a bit. Gold up $2 at 1796 You got silver up 35 pennies at 2265 We jumped in notes and bonds. A little bit of negative, negative price. Lower price, higher yield. Excuse me. We've got the 10-year yield sitting right now at about 1.46. 1.46, about percent. Uh, your negative 10 ticks on the 10-year. Take a look at the daily. Uh, these notes and bonds, man, it is quite a head-scratcher. In terms of the pullback we've had, you look where we've been. Now, that's a three-year weekly. You just zoom in on the action this year, though. We were up to a level, a high of 135.14. You have pulled back, but we're sitting at almost the price level we've been at for more than two months now on that 10-year. Uh, pretty comfortable, right? It's just under about 1.5% right now on the 10-year. We jump over to the VIX. The VIX a little uncomfortable with the market moves yesterday coming into the open. But, man, this VIX, if you're ever long the VIX, if you're ever long the VIX uh, using options, using some of the triples out there, UVXY, some great vehicles to trade this VIX. Uh, I know some of our newsletter writers do that uh, frequently. But, man, if you got moves, you got to take those moves ever because it is remarkable, the moves, and then how quickly this VIX will give it back. You opened yesterday at 26. Just like that, we're going to open today at 22. You're right back to where we were on Friday action on the VIX, let alone Wednesday and Tuesday of last week as well. All right, let's start it off with Nike. Earning season wrapping up and Nike closing out uh, quite a quarter. Uh the way that they've transformed their business to be able to deliver their product to consumers directly, whether it's on their website, uh, online, it's changed that company. And you saw some of those results last night. You got Nike up. We close at 157. We're up about $7 right now at 164. Nike, you put it on a daily. 
quite a pullback though. We had a double top back here in August, hit that area with another smaller double top, almost made it to 180. We've sold off to 156. This morning though, we're gonna open back at about 164 right now on that chart for Nike. 164. You put it on a little bit of a longer term time frame, five year weekly. Strong chart, man. Strong chart, especially when you look at where we're going to open, right? On the open, 164. Uh, maybe that's a little double cup formation there of some symmetry. And uh, maybe we make a triple cup higher as we pop on the open on Nike at 164. Jumping over to uh, their numbers. So 83 cents a share, 20 cents above estimates and revenue beat as well. Uh, sales were hurt by a slowdown in production and transportation of it goods. Even with the beat, they're dealing with some supply chain issues. Micron beats as well by five cents a share. Quarterly profit of 216. Revenue above forecast. Upbeat forecast. That's like the quad vecta of what to come out on earnings. Strong demand for its chips. And yeah, they traded higher in a big way. MU is their symbol, and you're going to pop about 8 or 9%. Now, here's the chart without registering, all right? We're going to open at about 89 on Micron. You see the highs we had earlier this year of about 96, and you're going to be challenging those highs. There's the 15-minute action on their earnings last night. You spiked to about 88. We're up to 89 on their numbers as well. Braze, I'm not familiar. Uh, Citrix has a report out there that uh, Elliott Investment Management and Visa are considering a joint bid for the software maker, CTXS. Always going to put a pop in your stock from 84 to 91 on that news. General Mills, they come out with their numbers, $0.06 cents a share, quarterly profit of $0.99 cents a share. Uh, they beat by $0.06, cents, that is. Revenue above forecast, it's amazing. Strong numbers in the face of everything that we've been hearing in terms of supply chain issues, uh, disruptions, the variant, etc. They raised the full-year outlook, um, full-year sales forecast. Uh, At-home dining demand remains elevated but said it's still dealing with higher input costs and supply chain disruptions. So they're a little bit lower. I mean, think they beat on earnings uh, with 99 cents, revenue above as well, and raise the full year sales forecast. It is tough business being a public company sometimes, folks, and you trade from 68 to 64. Beat on earnings, beat on revenue, raise the forecast. But yeah, they're dealing with higher input costs and supply chain supply chain disruptions, uh, even though in-home dining remains elevated. Some of these trends we have, folks, are going to stay with us for a while. People enjoy shopping and cooking. It's not even, I mean, it is a money saver, but costs are so high at this point. The grocery bills are just mammoth, man. If you're making a, a, a family meal at home and you're buying everything you need in there, right, all the way down, you want to make a salad, you want to make some chicken, uh, maybe you're making burgers, right? You got to buy the lettuce, you got to buy the oil, the vinegar, the dressing, you got to buy the marinade for the chicken, you got to buy the chicken itself. Maybe you're going to have some Brussels sprouts. Uh, you're going to put some balsamic vinegar on the Brussels sprouts. You buy everything there. Uh, point being, it's not as much of a money saver as I feel like it used to be because the way costs have gone up just even for, especially for those good healthy foods, whether you're talking about proteins, veggies, fruits, all the stuff that we should be eating. Uh, but guess what? People enjoy it. People enjoy sitting at home. They've done their homes over, right? They've gotten comfortable. They enjoy cooking. They've gotten into that routine more and more. And it's just something that they're doing more and more. And you're seeing it uh, in some of the numbers. But guess what? They're dealing with some woes here. General Mills, you put it on a weekly, though. You came into that at almost, uh, I think that's all-time highs on General Mills, is it? No, not so not so fast. We were up in 2016 to 72 bucks. You make it all the way to 68, and we're going to open at about 65 bucks right now for General Mills. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade, Fast Market. We got the S&Ps up about 38 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up a full percent, up 159. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P futures up 38 points right now. That's a gain of about 8 tenths percent. Tech stocks, NASDAQ 100, up an even 1 percent right now. 155 points in the green. You get the Dow up 8 tenths percent. The Russell leading the way up 1.1 percent. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, on the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market at noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, and the team breaking down the day's market action walking you through hypotheticals, trade setups, talking about options, talking about defined risk. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. You know, this is a rally fueled by Nike's earnings. Nike up about 4% uh, pre-market. Micron's earnings, Micron up about 8.5% pre-market. And then foreign markets. Japan was up 2% overnight. That gave all of our futures a boost. And Tommy... There's still time on the calendar for a Santa Claus rally. We're, we haven't missed the window yet, and we may be coming into a pretty good um, snapback recovery here as things don't seem as bad, although the headlines are still quite um, alarming. No one, you know, I, I, I talked about it yesterday for all the headlines about the Omicron variant. 2.1 people flew over the weekend. And 20 million, million people went to the opening of a movie over the weekend. So the question is, are Americans changing their habits? And the answer is no, not right now. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. It's always interesting when we talk to you Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at this time, 9.15. And so we haven't chatted with you since Thursday. And man, Kevin, recently, these weekends we've been getting, talk about some movements. I mean, I just pulled up the chart because I was curious as you came on. We had the full move about 100 points down in the S&P and since then 80 points up uh, since we chatted with you on Thursday. Quite a rebound as we come into potentially not a ton of news, especially what, uh, in terms of what we've had to digest in terms of the big hurdle last week with the Federal Reserve. Uh, we trade higher. We give back some of those gains 
on Thursday and then some. But Nike, as you said, man, some strong numbers. General Mills actually a little bit lower today, but they had some strong numbers yes, uh, as well, man. I was just going over it to start the program. It's got to be pretty tough when you beat on earnings, revenue, and you raise your outlook. But we know sometimes there's other issues going on, whether it's supply chain issues, et cetera. General Mills down a little bit. But as you're saying, man, some strong numbers across the board. Uh, Nike leading the way in a big way. They continue, man, the way that they do business online, direct to consumer, helping them out. Uh, what are you guys going to be talking about in line of uh, it's December 21st, which is amazing. I hope I uh, can finish up my Christmas shopping. So much for getting it done in November, Kevin, ahead of the Christmas rush. Uh, but with the end of the season coming, what are you guys going to be talking about for the discussion today on Fast Market? Well, um, like, like Folio is going to do a presentation on Carmax. They have earnings out tomorrow morning. I think the rest of the show <coughs> will be focused on, based on Mike Crime's earnings, what does that do for the rest of the memory space? So we'll probably look at, you know, something. Remember, this time of the year we, 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 we do theme shows because it's kind of thin on earnings. But we will cover CarMax. They have earnings, like I said, tomorrow morning. But then we'll do one of our themes probably close to around chips we're in the final decision right now tommy do you ever look for this time of year kevin uh, does your brain ever go into the fact that we've been up for so much for so long especially after you know that covid pullback uh does tax selling ever i mean really it seems like you know taxes aren't really going up next year in terms of the political scope of things but just still the remarkable move um that we've had could people be waiting potentially till January to close out some positions? Does that ever come into your head, especially this season with where the markets are? I'm sure there's people that do that, Tommy, or focus on that. I don't. I've never focused on uh, tax loss selling. Um, that that's I'll leave that to the accountants. My job is to turn little piles into big piles and let the accountants figure that out at the end of the year, Tommy. I never really focused on anything in terms of accounting. Yeah, listen, you say it well as in you, you got to make the cash and the taxes, unfortunately, or fortunately, are going to take care of themselves uh, in the end. But uh, I just think about it more so just some of these runs these stocks have had, man, um, just mammoth runs, as we all know, especially in the technology, the growth sector, even some of the biggest companies out there like Apple. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the conversation, man. We look forward to the show as always. Micron, I got it up here on the Thinkorswim platform, quite a pop on their earnings last night from 82. We're pushing almost 90 bucks this morning. Uh, strong numbers, man. I mean, this economy, Kevin, these numbers, it seems like these companies keep delivering, keeping this market up and uh, in the face of some headlines that are pretty tough, man. But as you say, as of right now, the numbers speak for themselves. We'll be watching the show at 12 o'clock today, Kevin. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure. Folks, tune in 12 noon Eastern time today. Fast Market. TD Ameritrade Network on Tiger TV. Uh, they'll be breaking down some of the action. And I do love some of the times when they go through and have an opportunity and a little bit light on the earnings to go over some of the themes uh, when they're just comparing different companies within industries, uh, which I think is so important as well. I've heard them talk about Target many times on the program. Target, a little bit higher with the market today. Target, 214 yesterday. Some of these moves, folks. I mean, take a look at Target, right? You were just at 270. You're at 220. You're back. You were in January, folks, at Target. You're within 10%. Now, that doesn't sound like, you know, a staggering amount, but Target traded from 175 to almost 270 this year, and you had a double top there. Some serious pullbacks on some of these equities with the market sitting at all-time highs. Walmart, different story. Uh, we do have some Walmart in my, my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. If you're looking at Walmart, man, it's got some resistance up at about 152 here. It's been up there about three times, whether it's about a year ago, last November, up here as well in August, up at that level in early November. But you're right back to an area where this trend line from basically July of 20, where Walmart's found a bit as it's hit that, you're back down to that price action on 139. Interesting to see some of the stocks that have paid the biggest price, like Zoom. Uh, I have to chuckle, man, this pullback, my goodness. You get down to a price level, 175, yeah, 175, 174.66, 174.66. Folks, you were trading at 107 in the middle of 2019, two and a half years ago before COVID. So a remarkable pullback when you think about the way that Zoom has integrated into most of our lives and is probably there at some capacity. I mean, as somebody that has a son, right? I'm chatting with my dad, the granddad. Uh, we do a lot of FaceTime, which is convenient, but Zooming, Skyping, you just become more acclimated with that as a form of communication, even when we're post-COVID. Uh, that's going to matter. And 
I mean, just I have associates that are in business, and I had one of my friends telling me that they had just transitioned during about, excuse me, this is six or nine months ago, though, as a paid customer for Zoom because they get people working remotely. That's going to be a standard going forward no matter what. They need to facilitate that. They use Zoom. Nonetheless, you're back to 200 bucks. You're still off the 588. Quite a pullback on this. I'm not even going to throw a Fibonacci number on this because it's basically an entire give back. Yeah, you could throw one on the 100, but no, you've just given it all back. I mean, maybe this is the first time we found a little bit of a bid, but I'd be careful because even as somebody that says, folks, the way that we get over this, man, is get out there, get the vaccine. It is safe. It is effective. Uh, I don't see Zoom really accelerating higher on lockdowns, people staying home, schools staying home. Fortunately, I don't see that's happening. Uh, Biden's going to be talking uh, at 230 I think today he's going to be talking about not calling for lockdowns, but encouraging schools to stay open. It's important, folks. I just talked about that. Uh, my four-year-old son in pre-K last Thursday, we get the call that he was exposed. So instead of sending him back Friday, which you are allowed to do in Florida, if you're asymptomatic, you can send the kids back. Um, just kept them out for one day because it's Christmas vacation anyway. But I had the opportunity to. We got people at home watching the little baby. Many people do not need those kids in school for their own development and for those working parents. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the opening bell. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Ooh, 
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We get the S and P's up about 38 points right now. 30 seconds in the trading day. You take a look at this S and P on a weekly basis. I've been bringing up this channel line, uh, giving it a little bit of latitude to the outside. We're talking about a channel line, folks. Basically, right from the COVID lows, taking out the flash low. You could call it a 2174. Excuse me, you take that channel line. Yeah, we've been above it. We've been slightly below it, but pretty well held within that channel line. You did just dip below it back again, but you can see the recoil. And we're sitting basically at that channel line, putting a little bit shorter time frame for a year daily. You can see where we got below that in October. We got below it briefly in the beginning of December. And we are basically sitting right at that channel line right now at 4,600. We'll see if we get back above it. It could also act as an area of resistance, though. So critical area, 4,600 with a uh, with a round number as well, tying into that as this market ticks a little bit higher, up to 4,601. We take a look at the Qs, a little bit of a different story on the Qs. You take a look at the channel line. We put this back on a three-year weekly. Uh, this channel line, a little bit of a different story. I'm talking about just taking it from where we were last year before the markets really took off in November. You did get briefly above that price point back in November. We had the Qs trade up to 408.71, but you can see pretty well-defined channel line going back more than a year now, and we have been bouncing from the bottom to the top, bottom, almost to the top, back to the bottom. We hit the top on almost two occasions, back to the bottom in October. We top out above that area, but only briefly, we're talking about a week or two. Uh, you did get above that channel line before we pull back. Lower boundary line, let's put it back on a daily for some Shorter term time frame. I mean, you make it back to the bottom portion of this. We're talking about 373 potentially in the Qs. Uh, you bounce back to the top portion. You're talking about 405 in the Qs. Quite a range, but quite a market we have. I mean, look at this run we just had from October. 350 to 408 in the span of about two months in those growth stocks. A lot of that fueled by, let's check it out, the FANG stocks. We got Apple up more than a percent today at 171.58. The pursuit of $3 trillion is alive and well. Uh, we are now about $12 from that price point, but man, the way Apple moves, anything is possible. Uh, we jumped, we were just at Apple, you jumped to Microsoft. Microsoft just had some severe volatility recently, man. Uh, Microsoft up 1.3%. I mean, you got the biggest companies out here charging higher. Google shares. Up six tenths percent, so not quite as big as Apple and Microsoft. We jump over to Amazon shares. Amazon up about half a percent, up 16 bucks to 33.58. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla up 1.7 percent, far off the highs it's had recently, though. Tesla trading at 916 this morning. Uh, what else? Jump to Facebook shares. Facebook shares up about six tenths percent as well. All right, let's jump over to crude. Quite the move in crude, and it's continuing, folks. We're up to 70.50. We talked to our man Teddy Kegstat from forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to him every Wednesday. Be interesting to get his take on this crude market. I imagine he is an unfazed bull, as he usually is when we chat with him. And we just traded down to a price point of 66.12. The previous low that we had, this is a weekly again, going back about a month, 62.43, right down to almost the lowest that we had back in August. Uh, and just like that, we're actually already, folks, you're down to 66.12. It's just Tuesday. And this bar is already green because today alone you're up a buck 92 on a weekly basis. You put it on a five minute chart quite a week. You started off at 70 bucks Sunday night, down to 66.12, up to 70.50 on crude. Jumping over to Micron, see how they're reacting on the open. Uh, give back a little of the, bit of the gains. They're still up about 8%. We take a look at Nike following their earnings. Man, Nike, look at that. You accelerate higher. You're up 7.2%. That is quite a pop on Nike. We take a look at the weekly. Seems all but natural. We challenge the highs at this point of 179.10. That is quite a weekly bar bouncing off the lows on Nike shares. We're up $11 today. And as I just said, man, we're only four minutes and 37 seconds into the trading day. And that is quite a strong open. Although, yeah, we've given back about 3 to $4 already on that open as well. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on. Let's check out notes and bonds as the slide continues there. Now, we're talking about a yield right now of 1.47%. 1.47. Uh, we're negative 12 ticks right now on the 10-year. We take a look at the 10-year on a weekly basis. I got to go back even further to get the load that I'm looking at. From 117.13 back in 
basically October of 2018, you make it up to a high of 140.24. That correlated to when yields, I mean, you were stuck there. Let's just zoom in. You were stuck at about half percent for a while. Remember that? When you're trading at 140.24, I mean, you traded there basically from March 9th, the week of, all the way until October 5th. You're talking about seven full months. You were stuck there. October, things start to move. Seemed like the market knew, right? The players in the market knew that, number one, the presidential election was coming, which was going to take out volatility either way. And number two, I'm sure they had some type of an idea of when the vaccine efficacy numbers were at least going to be delivered. There was a lot of hope for those numbers already. Markets started to move slightly with a slight higher yield through October. You see the first slip, right? In terms of September 28th, you had a high of 139.26. By the time you got into uh, October 26th, you had already moved, you're at a low 138.03. What was that, 130, almost two full points you lost during that time, and then of course markets really take off, you have yields rising, but boy, since then folks, we are all the way back to where we were March 29th in terms of yields. What happened to rising yields, right? Not so much. The 10 years sitting at 130.26. Now, I bring up this chart, backing things out again. Uh, we're at an area I mean, you're talking about 128.26, so two full points below, you could say is an area that there's gonna be support. Uh, on the upside of that though, man, it would just be remarkable if these ever could find a bid here and send rates even lower. It's possible, folks. I don't know why that would be in terms of the inflationary environment we are in, but uh, it's more than possible looking at that chart. And let's check out gold to round out the crew. Uh, gold. I talked about uh, going to send out an update for subscribers. 1770. You know, we don't have a gold position. If you want some action in gold, I encourage you to head on over to the newsletter tab at TFNN. You can check out the gold report. Uh, gold 1770 has been a nice area of support. Yes, below that level occasionally. But you see, going back to whether it was the area that it actually bounced in November of last year, whether it was the area it bounced in in June. August, there was that quick acceleration lower, but 1770 providing some strength for gold, and you back things up even further than that. Let's put it on a max. I mean, you're talking about an area right where we are for the highs, right, which is always nice. That was an area of resistance, talking about about 1800. We found an area of somewhat support at that level. Maybe that's the next acceleration higher for gold as, a, as we proceed in a possibly inflationary environment. Uh, boy, look at that chart, S&P on a monthly basis, folks. Just keep that one in mind. I try and keep it in the back of my head because, folks, this is what a market can look like sometimes. As I zoom in from 1994 to 2014, there's a 20-year period, okay, that, yes, you go from 600 to 2,000. But to back that up even further, if you just take it from 1999, you basically got a flat market for a period of 13 years. That's the S&P. That's not the NASDAQ 100, folks, okay? Then you got this market. That's a period of 13 years, too, where you go from 657 to 4600. Which 13 years do you want to be in? I like being in these 13 years, but guess what? The other 13 years is still going to happen at some point where you get a consolidation. Be ready for it if possible. We'll be right back, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now up 34 points. So a little bit of a give back on the open, but putting on a five minute chart, zooming in on the action. Uh, yeah, we give it back a little bit from about 4,600. We have dropped about eight points pretty quickly right now. Uh, s and is giving back some of the gains. Boy, I've said it many times and uh, it's easy thing to say in this market, but we have a two way market, folks. So be careful of that. And the one thing to consider is that it does provide the opportunity for the market to move in dramatic fashion without people realizing it. And I say that as in, you know, right now we are about 150 points off of the highs. So you're talking about only a 3% move off of the highs right now. You get the type of moves where it might not be a subtle decline. You might be in a period of high volatility where all of a sudden you're 100, 150 points off the high, all of a sudden you're 300 points off the high, but you're getting, you're getting big days up in between that, which kind of lull you into thinking that the two-way market is going to keep things even. It is an even two-way market right now. Sitting 150 points away from all-time highs, considering the run that we've had, is basically at all-time highs. But just be aware if these moves become a little bit more magnificent to the downside. I mean, we're coming into next year. Goldman just downgraded GDP a full percentage uh, because the Build Back Better plan might not pass. We got possible inflation. We got rate hikes coming down the line. There's a lot up in the air there. But as our man Kevin Hinks said, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves that people are traveling, people are watching movies, and uh, you cannot deny the facts of those numbers, folks. All right, I'm going to jump around for a few minutes. I'm going to do a little health update. So uh, I'm always thinking about stuff to talk about. One of the things that I've dove down the YouTube hole recently, um, and I say recently, in the last few years or something like that, really, when you're staying at home. Uh, folks, a lot of us traders, we're sitting at home, we're, we're at our desk, all right? You need to be active, you need to be healthy. The times that I've done the best in the market, the best in life, the times I've had the most success are the times when I'm more in control of my health than ever before because you're just making sound decisions you're in control of the decisions you're making as a trader it's very important to have self-discipline and being healthy and making the right health choices takes a lot of self-discipline in the same way so i found that and it goes back to my poker graphs books and i can show you one year man you want to talk about mentality and how it matters in life um i was 
dating somebody in a relationship, that's not going well, so your head's not in a good spot. Uh, I was losing money at the tables. I knew I was being impacted mentally. Um, so that relationship ended. Life goes on, such is life, unfortunately so. And literally, my, my graph switched on a dime. And it's just the mentality of being happy, making good choices, being sad, you know, dealing with stress and making bad choices. And by eating healthy, getting my mind right, I was just making consistent, better decisions. So to jump into it, all right, one thing that I don't think enough people know about is just the straight technicals of weight, okay, and diet. So if you're out there and you wanna be a little bit healthier, the first thing I always tell people, man, and I am not trained in physiology or anything like that, folks, but I like getting out, I like being active, I like working out, I like eating healthy, I like cooking, um, is get out and walk. If you can't do anything else, get out and walk. Walking is a great exercise for almost anybody. Uh, yes, as you become more fit, you will need to push your body more to get a little bit more exercise if that's what you're looking for, but you can always start somewhere, folks. I've had some back surgeries over my years, nothing too serious, thankfully, but the way I always came back is I just went out and I walked, do some yoga or something like that. Um, but if you're thinking about then adding diet into things, because walking is probably the most important. You gotta be active, you gotta be active. Never give up on it, right? You get too big, you get too unhealthy, you gotta be moving. You can't move, you're in trouble, folks. Um, so get walking. If you're gonna take in the next step and focus on your diet, which I think helps you across the board, folks, um, you gotta look at calories in, because it's pretty simple, calories in, except for the fact that calories do matter and there's a difference in calories, folks. I like eating a lot of lean proteins. I love chicken. Uh, I like the bad stuff too. I'll eat some hamburgers. Uh, I like to keep the carbs on a low level. It's what works for me, all right? But the simplicity of it is, uh, you burn a certain amount of calories during the day, okay? And one way that I've found works somewhat well for me, and uh, I learned this by watching YouTube videos of plenty, folks, and this one I got, um, I'll give you credit, Nick Bear, Bear Performance Nutrition, they got a great website, they, they sell supplements. Uh, I'm not even affiliated, I've never even ordered something, but they do have a great website. And he turned me on to the Mifflin St. Jor Basil metabolic rate. So all this does is it figures out how many calories you burn in a day. An important fact that you should know if you're really focused on losing weight or being healthy, okay? So all you do is you Google this, folks, Mifflin St. Jor, you put in your, your male, your weight, 200 pounds, inches, about 5'10", 70 inches, 41 years old, okay, and then you put in your activity level. I just threw in a 1.5 there. I'm probably a little bit more active than that, and that puts me at about 2,500 calories, okay? That's per a day. Now, if you wanna lose weight, you gotta be under that level. This all varies, folks, okay? It's not an exact science. I'm not burning 2,503, okay? But I'm probably burning somewhere around there, and one pound of body weight equals about 3,500 calories. It's that simple. You wanna lose a pound of body weight, you gotta eat around 3,500 less calories than your body would have burned. Simple math there is, you drop your daily calorie intake about 500 calories under what you might be burning on a regular day. So let's say I wanna do that, okay? Let's say my burn's about 2,503, 2,500. I'll do a 2,000 calorie diet over seven days. That'd be about 3,500 calorie deficit. That should be about a pound, okay? We take that. Okay, and then you have how much are calories worth? Well, protein and carbs, folks. Every gram of protein is four calories. Every gram of carbs is four. And fat, the good stuff sometimes. Every gram of fat is nine calories, okay? Protein, you wanna have about three quarters of a gram. If you're a body lifter, you can be above this to a gram to 1.25 grams per a pound of body weight. So at 200 pounds, that would put it at about 150 grams of protein maybe that I'm gonna try and take in. Fat, anywhere from as you can see, 0.25 to 0.4 grams per pound of body weight. Uh, let's say I put it at 0.3 grams of fat. Again, 200 pounds, that's gonna bring me at 60 grams of fat. And then what you do is you fill in the rest with carbs, okay? And every carb is gonna be four calories. So what did I do is 150 grams of protein is going to be 600 calories. 60 grams of fat is going to be 540. That brings me to 1140. I got 860 left. Every carb is going to be four. That puts it to 215 carbs. So my diet would be 150 grams of protein, 60 grams of fat, and 215 grams of carbs. 
The one thing to forget is don't forget about fiber, folks. Fiber. Don't forget about it because you need it, okay? And you need about 15 grams of fiber per 1,000 calories, okay? So you add that in. This is just a rough guide, but I encourage you, folks. This is information that helped me greatly. Uh, you go over myfitnesspal.com. I use this app sometimes to track some of your data. If you're unaware, I encourage you to do it, folks. Just writing down what you eat, figuring out sometimes. You know why I did it most? Get yourself a scale, too, if you really care about it, because I was plowing way too much cream into my morning coffee. That was like two breakfasts sometimes if you have two or three cups. Anyway, that's a little health update, folks. Take it for what it's worth. Focus on your health, because it drives through everything else going on in your life. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up 28 points. NASDAQ 100 gives it up pretty quickly right now. You just traded from above 15,800 down about 100 points to 15,684. Dow's up 271 right now. You got Bitcoin, quite an acceleration on Bitcoin, up to above 49,000 this morning. Crude, continuing higher, hanging above 70 bucks, and we jump to gold right now back to 1794. So just to recap it again, folks, real quick, all right? And as I do that, 
please head on over to the front page of TFNN. Uh, I've talked about the sale we have going on, folks. Tiger Dollars, two more days. You can get up to a 40% bonus. I encourage all of you to take advantage of it, folks. Current subscribers, it's a no-brainer. Get your Tiger Dollars, apply it to your future transactions. You save added money. Uh, new to TFNN or thinking about signing up in 2022 to any of the webinars we do, newsletters, live trading events, uh, get your Tiger Dollars so you can use them for all of that stuff and add up to 40% bonus savings on those purchases. So real quick again, folks, because, you know, I love going over the market, but man, the market's nothing if you don't have health, all right? And this one went a little bit quick, so to recap it here, folks, the way that you go about this, because, man, it's tough sitting at home all the time, sitting in your chair, okay? You figure out, first of all, First step is you figure out how many calories you should be burning in a day, okay? The next thing is, folks, you go get uh, MyFitnessPal, okay? So you can track the food you eat, and you'd be surprised. When you build a two-calorie, thousand-calorie diet, you can eat a lot of great food. What you can't do, and what this has helped me out so much, which is why I just wanted to share it with you, is that you can't just plow through a bag of Cheez-Its. <laughs> because if you write that down and you put it on your tracker, and MyFitnessPal is free, folks. They're not a sponsor or anything. It's a free app, MyFitnessPal. You can track what you do. Um, you can scan barcodes, super simple. Uh, it just shows you that it's the small stuff, folks. It's the details, as is normally the case in life, okay? You shoot for those numbers I talked about in terms of about three quarters of gram per body weight. Fat, you can do up to about 60 grams uh, if you're a 200-pound man, something like that, and you just fill in the rest with carbs. And carbs, folks, I don't do well with carbs. Carbs are the thing that you just pull them back. You need that protein, you need the fat, you need some carbs as well, but... uh Get it done, folks, because when you feel great, that's when you do the best things in life. Bottom line. That's why I wanted to share that info. All right. Stay tuned, folks. We got a man, Basil Chapman's coming up live next. Larry's live at 11. Fast Market at 12. Steve Rhodes, Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.